Now moving forward, time to take up the next one, question number 10. Let alpha, beta, gamma, delta be real numbers such that sum of squares of alpha, beta, gamma is non-zero, that is all are not zero simultaneously and alpha plus gamma is equal to 1. Suppose the point 3, 2, minus 1 is the mirror image of the point 1, 0, minus 1 with respect to the plane alpha x plus beta y plus gamma z is equal to delta, then which of the following statements is are true? Let's understand what the question is talking about. There is a point, say p. It is given that mirror image of the point 1, 0, minus 1. So say this is 1, 0, minus 1 and its mirror image is given as 3, 2, minus 1. So its mirror image say q 3 2 minus 1 with respect to a plane. Now with respect to a plane we have this term. So let's do one thing try to draw a plane like this. Correct. Now with respect to this plane when you have image so obviously we can say this is the normal and we can clearly say now when this is the normal, this is the midpoint say M, which is lying on this plane, correct? This is midpoint. Now what is the midpoint from here? This is obtained as 2, 1, minus 1. I'm sure this point is clear. All right. We have the midpoint, we have the direction ratios of PQ that is normal to the plane. We can write the equation of plane which is given to me involving alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So yes, the question is solved now. Equation of plane, it is given by, we can find the direction ratios as 2, 2, 0 or 1, 1, 0. So this is 1 into x minus 2 plus 1 into y minus 1 plus 0 into z plus 1 is equal to 0. Meaning x plus y we have minus 2 and minus 1 that is is equal to 3. But given to me this plane is alpha x plus beta y plus gamma z is equal to delta. I am sure this point is clear. All right, let's check what the question is talking about. Suppose this is given to me as a mirror image from this one, then which of the following is R true? When you compare the coefficients or equate directly, you can say alpha, beta, R1 and gamma is 0 while delta is 3. I have simply equated. Correct. Now, when I go in this fashion, I can check from the given options. Yes, alpha plus beta is coming to be 2. So, let's write down. Alpha plus beta is 2. Next, delta minus gamma. Yes, delta is 3 and gamma is 0. So, delta minus gamma is 3. Next, delta plus beta is 4. When you look at the term delta and beta, Yes, delta is 3 and beta is 1. So, delta plus beta is 4. It is also correct. Next, alpha plus beta plus gamma, this is 2 while delta is 3. So, this is not correct. So, the correct options for this question we obtained as A, B and C. I am sure this is clear. Let us move on to the next one that is question number 11. Let A and B be positive real numbers. Suppose PQ vector is given and PS vector is given this one and these are the adjacent sides of a parallelogram PQRS. This is clear? All right. Now, there is a vector they are saying U and V. Let U and V be the projection vectors of W along PQ and PS. Projection vectors. If mod u plus mod v equals mod w and if the area of the parallelogram pqrs is 8 then which of the following is r true let's try out since it is given u vector is a vector which is the projection of w in pq correct so if we talk about modulus of u then clearly we have the projection of a vector on another one. If we have to find projection of B vector on A vector, then how we obtain A dot B upon mod A? This is clear? All right. So here we have 
projection of W along PQ. Correct, projection of W along PQ, meaning this is A plus B because you have Ai plus Bj dot I plus J, that is A plus B divided by root A square plus B square. Correct. If you want vector in its direction, what you need to do? Just multiply with the unit vector PQ along which you need. Similarly, you can find mod V vector as A minus B upon root A square plus B square. Next, what is given to us? It is also given that this is equal to, sum is equal to W. So let's write down mod W, the sum. This implies that mod A plus B plus mod A minus B is equal to root 2 into A square plus B square inside the root itself. Now, either A is greater than B or B is greater than A. In each case, when you plan it, what you are getting, let's check out. Let's say A is greater than or equal to B. You have 2A is equal to root of 2A square plus B square. Squaring both sides, you can see clearly after cancelling this root 2. So you have root 2A is equal to this term. Squaring, you are getting A square is equal to B square or A equals B. I'm sure this point is clear. It is given to me A and B are positive. So A is equal to B is obtained. Next, we have PQ vector and PS vector given as AI plus BJ and AI minus BJ. We have A and B both are equal. So when you take dot product of the two, what you are getting? It is zero. Dot product of the two is zero. That means PQ dot PS is 0, meaning that PQRS is a square. It's a square. And what is the side of the square? That can be obtained by using area given. What is the area given to me? 8 units, correct? So area meaning when you go for modulus of, when you go with parallelogram, it is PQ cross PS, it's modulus required, but when it is proved it's a square, you can simply find the length of the side, that is PQ itself. So modulus of PQ whole square. This is given to you 8 units. And what is that? Root 2A. So this gives you 2A square is equal to 8 or A is simply 2. So A and B both are equal to 2. Now the question is solved. Let's check out from the given options. A plus B is equal to 4. Yes, this is correct because A and B both are equal to 2. Second, A minus B is 2. No, it is not correct because 2 minus 2 is 0. Third, the length of the diagonal PR of parallelogram PQRS is 4. Now what is the side length? Side is PQ vectors modulus that is root 2a. Root 2a meaning side length is basically 2 root 2. When side length is 2 root 2, so what is the length of the diagonal? Yes, it will be 4. This is correct. Correct? So option number C is also correct. Moving forward towards the option number D, W vector is an angle bisector of the vector PQ vector and PS vector. Clearly not. So yes, we have two correct options. A and C. Let's mark and mention as our answers. So I'm sure this is clear. Time to take up the next one that is question number 12. Now taking up question number 12 for non-negative integers S and R let S R it is defined in this fashion. We know that binomial coefficients are defined in this way so this is clear. What next given? G M N is defined as summation from P equals 0 to M plus N f of m n p divided by n plus p c p we can say what else given f m n p is defined further in terms of this one a bit complicated it looks like let's see whether it is or not 
what is required let's check out then which of the following statements is are true we have to talk about g m n g n m whether these two are equal or not so we have to first find what is actually g m n we have to simplify for getting g m n we need to find what is f m n p that is to be simplified so let's start with f m n p this is important to write let's see f m n p equals it is given summation i equals 0 to p m i n plus i p p plus n p minus i let's try to rewrite the values as given so this is summation i equals 0 to p m i keep as it is this one n plus i factorial upon p factorial into n plus i minus p factorial multiplied with p plus n factorial divided by p minus i factorial into p plus n minus p plus i that means we have simply p is cancelled n plus i factorial now we can see n plus i factorial is cancelled moving forward this is summation m i we can rewrite this term if required but m is not involved and i is also not visible separately so let's keep it same n plus i n plus i cancelled we can see p plus n factorial upon p factorial it is independent of i so it can be kept aside so this is p plus n factorial upon p factorial into m i into what we are left with n plus i minus p and p minus i if you add the two what you are getting simply n factorial let's multiply and divide with n factorial divided by n minus p minus i factorial into p minus i factorial so this can be seen what is happening over here this is changing to this form like n c p minus i or n p minus i in that bracket so this is equal to i is same moving 0 to p as usual we can write it finally p plus n c p summation i equals 0 to p and what is that this is m c i into n c p minus i now when you vary i from 0 to p what is going to happen in this term this is let's write down separately since summation i equals 0 to p m c i n c p minus i we can put it as equation number one so that later we can substitute it this when you rewrite what you are getting let's see m c 0 n c p plus m c 1 n c p minus 1 plus m c 2 n c p minus 2 and so on it is going till p term that is m c p n c 0 so i am sure this is clear what i am writing here all right this is product of two terms binomial one and how we solve this kind of thing by considering expression 1 plus x to the power m into 1 plus x to the power n and expanding it separately once you expand separately and multiply secondly you write 1 plus x to the power m plus n and when you go with the comparison you are getting this value as m plus n c p correct so replace this value back over there therefore from equation 1 if i go for the value that is f m n p therefore f m 
n p is equal to now let's check out what we are getting over here this is p plus n c p p plus n c p multiplied with m plus n c p i am sure points are clear so far so now going up to check what is g m n given to me g m n is given as summation p equals 0 to m plus n f m n p upon n plus p c p correct so when you write it you are getting summation p equals 0 to m plus n f m n p you obtained as n plus p c p into m plus n c p it is given divided by n plus p c p so yes these two terms are cancelled we have summation p equals 0 to m plus n m plus n c p that is sum of binomial coefficients in the expansion of 1 plus x to the power m plus n so what is this result 2 raised to the power m plus n so g m n is obtained as 2 raised to the power m plus n now time to go for the options first option g m n is g n m yes whether you write 2 raised to the power m plus n or 2 to the power n plus m it will be same option a is correct m n plus 1 m plus 1 n this is also correct because again you get the same result g 2 m g 2 n is equal to 2 times g m n no it is not correct you can cross verify when you write here g 2 m 2 n you get here 2 m plus 2 n meaning 2 raised to the power 2 times m plus n this is clear now right side is talking about simply 2 times g m n so right side will actually be 2 raised to the power m plus n multiplied with 2 meaning plus 1 while lhs is whole square so it is different option d this is talking about whole square yes this is correct so option d is correct as we discussed so yes the correct options for this question are a b d i'm sure this is clear although it's lengthy calculative but can be solved moving on to the next one that is question number 13 